Hey guys, Josh Happy Little Landscapes. Today we came back with an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Really crazy sky. Nice simple little mountain. A couple trees at the bottom with some bushes and this little gnarly guy over here on the side. Real easy, real uh, good tutorial for beginners. So if you want to learn how to paint a painting just like this, or if you haven't done a sky in this color, or if you don't know how to make a moon, or how to get your snow to break on the mountains, this video is perfect for you. Uh, stick with us, check the description below. I'm gonna list the colors that you need and the brushes that you need. And we're gonna get rocking and rolling just like this. Hey guys, back again today. We're gonna do a, an 11 by 14 inch canvas. And we're just gonna go nuts today. We're gonna have this crazy green sky, maybe a big moon, maybe a big tree that's kind of hanging over. We're just gonna figure it out as we go along. Nice little beginner painting, shouldn't use a lot of colors. I'm gonna use a lot of tools and it's gonna end up looking real good. You guys have already seen it. I'm about to come up with it right off the top of the head right here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I really like how that moon came out of my last painting, so we're gonna use another cup. And this time, we're gonna go with our phthalo green right against the Bob Ross, uh, right against the canvas that we put Bob Ross liquid white on, right? I'm gonna come around and just make this circular shape without moving our cup, obviously. And then bam, we're gonna have this moon color back in there. Now, if we can just stay on the edges of this, it's gonna end up looking real good. Just stay on the edges, try not to cover into that, into that bit. You can even use a filter brush just to really try to stay on that circle. We've had a couple little bits of thicker paint come in there, but just like that. our little white moon shape and we're not going to touch it at all. All right, we're going to come out with our green, staying along the edges, right? Don't want to mess with it too much. And we'll throw some sap green in there. This first one was our phthalo green. This might be the sap green. We'll throw some, oh yeah. Throw some black up in the sky too, just to uh, get some other colors in there. We have this crazy little Sky. We can take and mix these in together. And I just kind of create this difference in color. It's all we want. Back to the phthalo green. We can throw some of that in with this sap green. We're just going to have this crazy looking sky out here. Come underneath. Just kind of fill it in about three quarters of the way down. That's all we're really going to need. Back in our black. Maybe a little black and blue we can throw in together. Got to cover the sides, of course, and the top. Always cover the sides and the top. Don't get lazy with it. Cover the sides, cover the sides. And who knows, we can even throw some like dark black clouds in here. We could literally do whatever we want. I've never painted a sky that looked quite like this before. That's what's fun about painting. You don't have to keep painting the same old stuff that you always paint. Right? You don't have to have the same colors in the sky. You don't have to do any. You literally do whatever it is you want. Cover that up. back in a little bit more of our phthalo green. Just kind of mixed in with that other sap green that's there. Right? You can throw it up here too, it's not gonna matter. So we just mix in with the black. And again, we put that solo cup on there to try to keep this moon nice and white, right? Nice white circle, don't wanna mess with it too much. I'm try to come in from the side so we don't touch our little moon. And just like that, we got this crazy kind of green sky. Gonna kind of chisel our one inch brush down and make some far off little clouds. Just far off little guys. Every so often. You don't need to have a lot. And just kind of bounce it in like that. Then we're gonna clean off the brush. We use Jasco brush cleaner, uh, our old beater bucket. Looks a lot like this. So every time you see me bend down, I'll just be 
feet in a brush, but I usually cut a lot of that out so you guys don't have to see it. it takes time, you know, away from the video, so that makes it shorter. It helps you guys kind of stay focused and stick with me, right? And take our dry brush, dry it off just like that. I'm gonna come in and just make these far off, these little circles and make these clouds look real far away. touch our moon, right? Nice far off little clouds, way off in the distance. You guys can actually see it better than I can with this glare. <clears throat> Looking good. dry brush, not really touching any other color. We want it nice and clean. That way it doesn't deposit anything into our white circle, right? We don't want anything into our white circle. Just like that. Just to get that thick bit of paint that we got to come off of the canvas, okay? Again, I want this, the moon really bright in this one. Now we can take and we'll get some of our mountainy color, right? That kind of thick Bob Ross paint. Get the blue and the crimson, a little bit of the black, and throw some brown in. Just so long as it's a nice dark color, right? We're gonna mix it all up. Just like that. It's gonna look black when you mix it look like a bunch of black paint, right? And we know there's a bunch of different colors in there. Now we can take and come in with our, with our mountain. I want the mountain to be real big in this one. I'm gonna come down, go right over the edge of those clouds that we had back there. Shoot, maybe there's one that boop, pops right up, right into our, right into our little moon right there. You can do whatever you want to do with yours, but for mine, there's a little bit that pops up behind the moon there, or in front of the moon anyway. I'm just going to throw that paint down in there, and then we can take with our one inch brush and make it whatever shape we want to make it, just by grabbing it and pulling it downward. And the more you, the harder you push, the harder it's going to, you know, the bigger your mountain's going to get. So depend where you want to, you know, decide where you're going to leave it, how far you want it to come down. And just as you come out, just kind of pull away from the canvas and then you, you know, you're not pulling all this big thick paint down in there. Of course, we're going to finish the sides because we always do. Got to finish the sides. We're only worried about what the top edge looks like, right? You can even go higher, you can go up here. It doesn't matter, but as long as the outside line is all we're really worried about. And kind of bounce it, come in, just pull it down. And then down here, we're just gonna kind of mix it up into that kind of greenish color that we had down there. Make this little fog. Quick little beginner tutorial for you guys, okay? Nice wicked green looking sky. A little bit of a mountain. Got this big. You can, even, you can pull it down the other way. You can do whatever you want to do. All right, now we're going to mix up some of our kind of shadowy snow color, right? What we're going to do for that is we're going to grab some of this blue from the Magic Fly set, mix it in with our titanium white. It's just going to give us this nice blue color. And just take a little bit of that dark and always throw it in there just to dull it down a little bit. Otherwise, it's super bright blue. Okay, if all of our lights over here, maybe we'll have some, some shadowy bits. You can see how I'm holding the knife. You hold it, you know, I, I just barely hold it, almost light enough where you can drop it, but you wanna hold it at the same angle of your canvas, okay? You don't wanna come in like this, flat if your canvas is standing up like mine. Always wanna just hold it very lightly, very lightly, and at the 
the same angle of your canvas, okay? I always like putting my shadows on first, because then you can come back over with your white paint and cover it up. And that way you're not trying to, to come in and just make these little minute shadows once you've already done it. Makes it easier in my mind anyway. Okay. Now I'll take some of our white paint. Just titanium white. Big thick titanium white, okay? And who knows, maybe we'll throw in like the littlest bit of yellow into our titanium white. Just a small bit, because it's very bright, okay? Don't want to have too much. Pull it out, just like Bob, cut across, get a little bit of our white line on the sucker. And then just come in and start dropping it down. All right, staying on the edges of our mountains. Again, holding it very lightly. You don't need to hold it super tight. Just very lightly. We're gonna go over our shadows. Right, our little blue shadows, however we think the snow comes down. And they're gonna mix in, but you'll have these bits of, of light and dark, right? Lighter and darker paint. And that's what we want. Right, just very lightly pull to the side. You don't wanna do it too many times, and you don't wanna go over all these other spots. Right? That's, what, that's the look that we're trying to achieve. So you don't want to go over and kill all that by going over it too many times. There's a bit of lighter colored snow down underneath here. And we got the shadow from the moon. Come down. You do literally whatever you want to do. However you want it to look is how it's going to look. Okay? And just leave some of these shadows. Don't cover all of them. Someone's going to come look at your painting. And they're going to be scrolling through and they're like, wow, little bits of yellow and bits of blue and white. You want to have those differences in color. And this thing comes down here. Comes down. Move our canvas down a little bit. Just to make it easier. And down underneath, we're not really worried about it. You can really kind of smoosh on that paint. Because all we're really going to do out down at the bottom is sort of make a fog out of it, right? So don't worry about it down there. Very gentle touch. Same angle of the canvas, right? If your canvas is flat, do it flat. If it's on a 45, do it on a 45. If it's sort of straight up like mine, that's the angle that you want to do your snow with. And that way, if you have enough paint on the knife, it will break in different areas. Don't force it. You don't want to force it. Let it do it on its own. Right? And again, the more and more you go over it, the more of those little breaks that you're going to cover up. And then you're going to go, Josh, my mountain just looks like just a straight line. You know, you had, you know, you went, either went over it too many times or you didn't have enough paint or you weren't holding it at the right angle. So just be careful of how it looks. Right? Be careful, of, mindful of what you're doing. Now we can take our dry two inch brush and we're going to come in here and just start kind of making this flaw, right? You don't want to go, you don't want to be on a straight line, so every so often kind of come up, come down, pop up, pop down, and you can just make this foggy little mist at the bottom of your mountain, right? That way anything that we put in front of it is going to make the mountain, going to make it look further away. And I like to go on a little bit of a U shape, a little bit of an angle, a little bend. That way it's higher in some areas, it's lower in other areas, and you know it doesn't look like just a straight line of fog. I like that, I like the way that's coming out. Paint all over myself. Alright. What we can even do with this one? Take our fog up a little bit higher. Just on this side over here. And then we're going to come back in, that same kind of color that we made all these out of, the same dark color. We can add in some of the greens over here. Just kind of mix them up with that dark paint. And it's, again, it's going to look black until you go to start putting it up against and it mixes with this liquid white and it'll change color on us, okay? Take a fan brush, <clears throat> doesn't matter what size you have. 
this one's about a size eight. Most of the time I'll use a size 10. And then I've got these little micro size fan brushes too that are real cool. Okay, so we can come in, start kind of popping down some, some little far off trees, right? Filling in the bottom where there's not as many gaps. These nice sharp treetops way off in the distance. And again, take your fan brush, wiggle it down so you get this chiseled knife-like edge. And just stay underneath your fog, okay? Don't have to come all the way to the side. And the further and further over here we get, the lighter it can get. I mean, a little bit darker over here, a little bit lighter over there. We're really gonna make the bottom nice and thick so you can't see through you know, you've got little areas where the, the light will shine through from the back, but in this instance, we want it nice and thick down there. <clears throat> Take our two-inch brush, and making some fog out of it, right? Same kind of line, a little U-shape. And then come in, just kind of mix up that fog. Helps mix it in with the paint down here that we haven't touched yet. Gives it a little bit of shadow. Shadowing. Now we can't really tell where the forest even stops. You know what I mean? Just like that. Kind of cover over in that same kind of shadowy color. Keep our fog on this side. My whole canvas trying to run away on us. Alright, we're just going to take these, swipe them straight up. And that's going to give them nice, sharp pointy tops, right? And come back up and just make our little, our little foggy area, a little mist, right? Mist in between each thing that you put on the canvas makes it look further away or closer, okay? And that's the thing we're trying to get to. Want this mountain to look further away than these trees, and then we'll put something big up in the, uh, in the foreground and kind of finish it off. Again, yeah, nice little quick, easy tutorial. Nothing too crazy. See a lot of times, you know, comments like, oh, this one kind of intimidates me because you're using so many different colors or, you know, I'm a beginner and I haven't really used those colors before. So don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Try something new, right? Always gotta try something new. Otherwise you're just gonna be stuck in the same, you know, you're gonna be stuck painting the same thing with the same colors, making the same sky, making the same trees. So try something new, okay? That is the goal for today. I'm gonna to try to make something that we've never done before. May look crap, may look good. So you can always take it if you don't like it, paint over it with liquid black, and then you know and you'll have like a, a nice space canvas that you'll be able to use, right? Okay, let's see. I like that there. I mean you can even leave it with the fog underneath there, like it's rolling through. Put a couple taller trees, maybe a big old tree over here that are nice and up close to us. And I'm gonna get all this dark paint, mix it up a little bit of the brown, a little bit of the green. Just take all the dark colors, just mix them up together. It'll look like this black paint, nice and mixed. And you want a lot of paint. You want it to be really thick. Okay, we can take over here and put a thicker, kind of far off evergreen. It's real textured to the canvas. And so as you pull it away, you want bits of the paint to be stuck on there. You can go all the way down the bottom if you want. We can have it, you know, where there's a bit of fog in between all these trees down here. Maybe this one's a little bit bigger. You start trying to get thick up here in your mountains, it's going to mix with that thick white paint. So if you need to, you get the littlest dab of paint thinner, right? Just the tiniest little corner of your, of your fan brush. And then when you come back, it'll slide over all that thick paint. And we won't have to worry about it. Right? You want to cover the bottom. You don't want to be able to see through to the back once you get down here. Okay? You want it to be nice and dark. Take another one since we just got a little bit of paint left. And yeah, why not? We'll put another little one off here. Again, real thick to the canvas. 
thickness. You want it to be thick and textured. And that's going to give us something to put our highlight colors on when we go back to do those, right? When we highlight these trees, all these thick chunks of paint that are sticking off of the canvas are going to grab our highlight color and have something to stick to. it all up. We can either do one kind of big scraggly looking tree or we can do one, you know, closer up big old pine tree that's going to cover that. We will see. I'm going to take our one inch brush and I'm going to dab it into all this thick paint. We didn't really mix it up so the colors will be a little bit different. And then down underneath here, <clears throat> I'm going to turn the brush over and just chuck in a lot of this thick real thick textured paint, okay? Really thick, really textured, make it real dark down at the bottom. I don't have any light coming through down there. What's cool about this one inch brush is it's got so many bristles in it, it'll literally make these cool shapes for you, just on its own. <clears throat> Shoot, we could even leave it like that, but I do want to have something big that's coming up out of switch to a, a micro size fan brush, right? Which I find is easier if you make the trees with a bigger fan brush and you go in with a smaller one to do the, the details. I'm going to get some of that liquid white and just very lightly mix in just on the ends of the brush. We don't want it up the whole, you know, on the whole bristles of the brush. Just want to cover the ends. And so if you get too much, you can always go back in and kind of dab it off. And then up here, we'll come back. <clears throat> Just ever so lightly touch. Because you don't want to have, you don't want to kill all those little, you know, the thick kind of textured areas that we did. So you just want to very lightly touch it. The harder the, you push, the more it's going to smash all those little cool, cool things in there. And I'm going to get some of that phthalo green. Didn't wash the brush. We've got all these greens on here. We might as well keep all the greens. All right, just ever so lightly come and touch and pull away. Don't need to go all the way to the bottom. Just go about halfway down. Touch and pull away. Now we have two different color trees in there. You can take, if you want a little bit of a darker one, we can go into the sap green. Sap green. Mix it with a couple of these little greens over here. And we'll come in and just ever so lightly again. And we're skipping areas, right? We're not touching the whole bit. We're leaving some of these darker shadows in there with it. Because you don't want to just cover it all in one color or you'll have no depth, right? Every time you go touch this dark paint, it's going to start to change the color of your highlights. So wash your brush off. Here's where we can have some fun when we get these dark bits down at the bottom. And you have a lot of colors like I do on my palette. I have, this is from another painting from before and painting from a couple days ago that I never cleaned off. So that's why we're going nuts today. <clears throat> if you don't have these colors, don't worry about it. You can, you know, mix colors that you do have in order to make a pink or, you know, you can make yours green or whatever, whatever color you want to do. Right, so we've got our pink color down here. I'm just going to pop up. Not going to cover everything, and you don't want to go across the whole thing either, like I almost did. You want it to change, right? You want to have all these different pretty colors in there. Let me take some of the rose color, go down. Remember, leave some of your dark shadows down in there, right? You don't want to kill everything. And just by touching it in different places, you know, leaving darker areas and lighter areas, we get these different colors. Come into our greens over here. All right, just differences in color is all we're looking for. And we'll go into our red. Maybe the Indian yellow. Indian yellow and the red. Right? Bounce it down. Again, not covering everything, leaving dark.
darker spaces in between. That way it looks like there's depth in between all these different bushes, okay? A little bit of red over here. Ow. Don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You don't want to cover everything. You don't want to cover all that dark. Just because I love yellow ochre. Put a little yellow ochre bits around in here. Again, not covering all of our darkest areas. Covering over it enough. tree off to the side, okay? We're going to take our darker paint, some of the greens, some of that brown. Don't want to use all your brown, though. Don't use all the brown. Maybe some of the red. Take that in there. Just make it this darker, different color, different shade of brown that we're kind of mixing up, right? We'll take our filbert brush and just get nuts. Just kind of Get a bit off that way. Another tree branch over here. It's a nice, thick, big old thick tree. I mean, it comes down, it kind of dies into those bushes right there. We can always cover, make another bit of a, a bush there. Different color, you know what I mean. Cover over the side a little bit. It's a big old branch that just comes out over our moon. This guy's up here. Another big guy. Totally up to us what we want to do. Now we're going to take our liner brush, dip it into our paint thinner three, four, five, six times, just so it's real runny. We're going to run the whole brush right through the thing and kind of spin it as we go out. And that way we can come in here and make these nice sharp branches. Okay, nice sharp branches that come off of our tree, kind of covering over that loop. You want to have the paint thinner, otherwise it's, it starts to kind of break like this. You want it to be nice and wet. You'll have these real sharp branches you can get with this nice wet tip. It's the wet tip of our brush, right? If it starts to kind of break or go away, you need to go back and get more paint thinner. You have it thicker down around the bottom. There's a bit that comes off, maybe it goes off that way. Totally up to you what you want it to look like. And the more you go over it, the more paint thinner you're going to need. It will start to break on us, which is not what you want. Not when you're making a tree branch. Just kind of have a mixing together over here. Throw it off the side, another branch over there, just so people, when they see it from the side, they'll be able to they'll want to look around and see what the heck is on the front of that canvas, right? If you're walking down the hallway and you see something that's got a finished edge, it makes you want to kind of turn around and see what's going on. So if you guys want to see what it looks like, go to my Etsy shop, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Use promo code YouTube to get 30% off any canvas in my store. The more you guys support me, the more canvases I can buy and the more crazy videos we can do each week, right? Crazy old videos. Big thick branch on this guy. And you can have yours do as many or as little as you want. You can kind of cross over them. Going over this white bit of the moon, they really stand out. Kind of cross over, go the other way, go off this way. Totally up to you. But remember, if it's nice and thick out here on the edge, you want a nice thick bit of branch that's holding it up down here too, okay? Yeah, we're gonna come up here. Let's make our little thin, sharp little branches. 
not going to go too crazy with these branches. And this guy comes off that way, he's over here. It's coming off here and there. There and here. Maybe there's one that comes off the side over here. It's a little bit of a imperfection in our tree, right? Imperfections is all you want. Again, that was a little bit thicker than I wanted, so we'll make the base of the branch a little bit thicker. Okay. Get that, come over. Just kind of fill it in where it's kind of starting to break. Just fill in those areas. Got to have a wet brush though. You want to have paint thinner on the end of your brush so you can get these cool, real sharp little edges. Really sharp edges. If your brush isn't wet enough, always go back in and get some more paint thinner. And come back. Because you need it to be wet. Remember, the thicker your branches are out at the end, they need to be thicker holding them up, otherwise it's just going to look weird. So just like that, we got a little, little tree, didn't take long. We'll wash off our brush, and then we're going to come back in, remember we saved a little bit of that brown. We got a little bit of brown from this older painting down here too come in on our shadowy side and just kind of pull to the side, pull this little bit of, of brownish color into the middle of our tree trunk, right? Finish it on the edge for the buyer. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, right? Come up into the thickest parts of our branches. Don't have to get them all. They don't all have to look the same. All right, just get some of that brown. And then when we come back in, and we get some yellow ochre down here, just a littlest bit though. We kind of pull it in from this side, and it's like we've got a lighter side and a darker side to our tree. Okay, like that, a little bit of yellow around the branches. Doesn't need to be a lot, and you don't want to cover up all your darker brown, right? Kind of have light, in order to have dark, or dark and light. Light and dark, dark and light. Right, don't need to cover over the whole tree in yellow. You want to leave some of these browns. Just like that. You got this cool little multicolored little tree. Way off. And like I said, be careful. You don't want to overdo it. liquid white and this yellow ochre. We can just kind of come back over some of these just to change the color a bit. Right, give it a little bit of love. A little bit of uh, a little bit of color. And it's all you want. Right, and when people look at it, they'll see that it's not just this monochrome piece. We've got these differences in color in there shining from the moon and everything else. Come back in with our real thick kind of goopy paint, turn our paintbrush upside down, and just pop in a couple, just one or two little things just to cover the bottom. And just like that, we got a finished painting, nice green sky, nice colorful bushes and trees and everything. And hopefully you guys learned something new. Cover that, cover that. Kind of connect these bushes a little bit, but without covering all of the dark colors, right? I don't want to cover all the dark. I'm going to have that in there so it makes it look like we're looking into shadows. So, nice quick little video, perfect for beginners. If this was helpful to you, subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can always like my Facebook page, at Happy Landscape Art. Go to Instagram, at Happy Little Landscapes. Find my Etsy shop, etsy.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. Use promo code YouTube. It will get you 30% off 
original canvas paint was like this. Everything else in my shop is very low priced. You can get prints, you can get pillows, you can get t-shirts, you can get phone cases and towels and tote bags and all sorts of stuff in there, okay? If you want to get a deal on an original canvas, use promo code YouTube. It's only for you guys. I don't put that anywhere else. 30% off, free shipping in the U.S., okay? So, I enjoy painting this one. I hope you guys learned something from it. I hope you try something new, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next painting because we always talk too much at the end. So, we'll see you guys on the next one. My 14-inch canvas with this nice green... Fuck. Oh, I hate the bloopers. God damn it. Back again, got our little alien friend Jerry here kind of give us the... But if you want to get a deal on a... Could have thrown a UFO in there, but we didn't. And let's get ready to roll, okay? We're gonna go... Alright, last take. Seriously, 